All right, so today we're diving deep into a YouTube video, um, and it's called The Side of China the Media Won't Show You. Okay. It's by this YouTuber, Mike. Uh. Okay. <laughs> and uh, he attempts to hitchhike like 2,000 kilometers across China. Wow. And uh, his journey is fascinating. It really is. You know, it kind of gives you a new perspective. It really does. It's on China. Yeah, it's fascinating how he uses this really personal and adventurous approach to challenge our perceptions of China. Yeah. Which is often misunderstood, I think. Right, and it's easy to get caught up in yeah. like the headlines and like all the political stuff. Exactly. But he just shines a light on the human side of China. Yeah, it's Like right. the everyday people, and right. it's really cool. What's interesting is so. he actually starts out with some like pre-existing skepticism yeah you know it's okay. like a little bit wary of what he calls communist propaganda oh really so he's not exactly expecting well, yeah. like a walk in the park or anything yeah i can imagine so i mean just picturing him trying to communicate yeah his destiny like you know he has a handwritten note he's right. using hand gesture i mean it's yeah. hilarious but also kind of stressful oh absolutely you can like feel his frustration yeah like when he gets lost he has to take detours yeah and you know, just the language barriers. It must be. It's tough. That's so hard. But, you know, it's funny because those struggles kind of make yeah. the kindness that he experiences right, totally. even more powerful. Yeah. Like, what about that part where yeah. he's walking along the highway and the police stop him? Oh, yeah. I was like, oh, no. Is this going to be? I know. I Especially given how, you know, people think <laughs> about law enforcement in China. Yeah. It could go either way, but that it goes far. a totally different direction. I know. It's so heartwarming. Instead of like a negative encounter. Yeah. They really try hard to help him. They drive him to like a service area. They make sure he has a place to sleep. They buy him lunch. Yeah. It's like, oh my gosh. It really flips the script. Yeah. On any preconceived notions you I might guess. have. Yeah. It makes you wonder like, right. what does that say yeah. about Chinese society yeah, and yeah. their view of hospitality. Especially towards foreigners. Yeah, like it really challenges that idea of China being this like right. closed off, unwelcoming place. Yeah, exactly. It's amazing. And this isn't just like a one-off thing. Oh, my know. This I is know. like... Like throughout the whole video. The whole time. He encounters this unexpected generosity. People offering him rides, giving him drinks, Ugh. giving them food. Dude, yeah. Inviting him into their homes. It's Amazing. Yeah, it really highlights this idea of like Guangxi, Guangxi. which is like a complex network okay. of social connections and obligations Got it. that are really important in Chinese culture. So it's not just being polite. It's like really building relationships yeah. and showing care. Exactly. Oh, that's really interesting. Okay, now let's talk about Mr. Chen. Yes. So this truck driver mm -hmm. who becomes like his unlikely travel companion, Right. their bond is like one of the highlights of the whole video. Absolutely. It's amazing how they connect. I'm like, on such a deep level. Totally. Despite the language barrier, yeah. they use gestures and translation apps. Yeah. And just this shared sense of adventure. I love that. And they're sharing meals and yeah. they're laughing and having these deep conversations. Yeah. You can just feel the warmth and respect between them. The genuine connection. It's really cool. Yeah. And it makes you think about how powerful human connection can be. Absolutely. Even when words fail us. For sure. It's amazing how, as their journey goes on, Mike's skepticism seems to just melt away. Yeah. It's like he begins to see totally. the real China. Like ways. China beyond the stereotypes. Exactly. Yeah, there's this part where he's talking about all the kindness he experienced. And he's comparing it to stories he's heard from other travelers in different parts of the world right. who have faced indifference or even hostility. Yeah, it's so interesting. It really makes you think about yeah. the different ways cultures approach hospitality. And it shows how important yeah. personal experience is yeah. versus like secondhand accounts. Right. It's one thing to read about it. Yeah. It's another thing to experience it. Totally. And speaking of experience. Yeah. Let's talk about the hitchhiking challenges. Okay. I was surprised to hear that he thinks it might be easier to hitchhike in other parts of the world. Oh, really? Than in China. That's counterintuitive. I know. You think with China's population, yeah. catching a ride would be easy. Exactly. But it's not that simple. Well, he talks about these logistical issues. Yeah, like what? Like the highway regulations. Right. And a lot of people are traveling really short distances. Uh-huh. And he even gets stopped by the police again. But this time, it's much more lighthearted. Okay. It's kind of a funny encounter. That's a good example. 
Yeah. Of how law enforcement can be portrayed differently depending on the context. Right. They're firm but friendly. Yeah, they're like, hey, you can't walk on the highway. Yeah. But we'll help you find a ride. Exactly. And then there's that scene at the toll booth. Oh, yeah. Where he's like creating this spectacle. Oh, yeah, oh, is that? Trying to get a ride. He's like making a scene. And the workers are just staring at him. I know. They're probably thinking, what is this guy doing? <laughs> it's a funny moment, but it also highlights how unusual his approach is. Right. What might be common in one part of the world yeah. is completely foreign in another. Totally. And Speaking of foreign experiences, yeah, his time with Mr. Chen, oh, Mr. Chen, really opens up a window into a side of China we don't usually get to see. That's a unique perspective for sure. I know their bond is so special. You can see the trust and respect growing between them. Yeah, they face the challenges of the road together, sharing meals in the truck's cabin, sleeping in those cramped quarters. It's like a crash course in cross-cultural friendship. And through Mr. Chen, yeah, Mike gets a glimpse into the life of a long-haul truck driver in China. The long hours, the routes, the camaraderie. Uh, the whole other world. It is. And the scenery they drive through is amazing. It, the landscapes are incredible. It's like vast deserts. Mountains. Industrial zones. Yeah, it shows the diversity of China. It really does. And I love how Mr. Chen is sharing his knowledge of Chinese history and culture. He's like a personal tour guide. I know he explains the significance of the Taihang Mountains. Their role in the war with Japan. Yeah, and even pointing out these wild goats. It's those personal touches I know. that make it so meaningful. It's not just about the tourist destinations. It's about experiencing it. Yeah, through the eyes of the people who live there. Exactly. And then there's that scene where they visit that industrial facility. Oh yeah, where Mr. Chen delivers the cargo. It's gritty, it's loud, it's not glamorous. But it's a vital part of China. I know, it shows the reality of industrial work. It's a different side of China. It is, it's all about seeing the full picture. The good, the bad, the complexities. And that's what Mike's journey does. It challenges our assumptions. It makes us question what we think we know. And as he gets closer to Beijing, yeah, you can sense that this journey has been about so much more than just a destination. I know, it's like a personal transformation. His anxieties melt away. Yeah. He's filled with appreciation for all the generosity he's encountered. It's powerful. It is. It's funny, as his adventure is coming to an end, yeah. there's this feeling of satisfaction, right. but also a bit of sadness. I know exactly what you mean. Like when you finish a good book and you're happy, you read it. Yeah. But you're also a little sad, it's over. Yeah, it's like that bittersweet feeling mm -hmm. you get. Totally, and it feels right. Yeah. That he ends up choosing to end his hitchhiking a little early. Right. Like he could have pushed on to Beijing. He could have. But instead he decides to stick with Mr. Chen. Oh yeah. On that final delivery run. And that says a lot about him. Yeah. Like his priorities have shifted. I exactly. He could have chased. Yeah. That final destination. Yeah. But he chose something more meaningful. Yeah. That connection with Mr. Chen. The bonds they built. Yeah. And let's be honest, he needed a shower. Oh, yeah. After all those days on the road. I know. He even says that in the video. It's a funny little detail. It is. It just makes it all feel more relatable. Yeah. It shows he's not some yeah. superhuman traveler. He's a regular guy. Yeah. Just embracing the challenges. Yeah. And even his decision to take the train into Beijing. Right. It might seem like a shortcut. Yeah. But it really shows how much he's changed. Exactly. It's not about proving anything yeah. anymore. It's about the experience. Right. And knowing that sometimes the most fulfilling path. Yeah isn't the most straightforward. And that final goodbye at the train station. <sighs> oh yeah, it gets me every time. The way they embrace. I know. You can see the warmth in their expressions. It's a real testament. It is. To the power of human connection. It really shows you that language barriers can be overcome yeah. when you've shared something special. Absolutely, and you know, as Mike reflects on his journey, yeah, he talks about how all these wonderful everyday people mm. restored his faith in humanity. That's powerful. It is. So what can we take away? What can we learn from this deep dive? I think it really challenges us yeah. to question our assumptions about the world. Especially about other cultures and places that are yeah. often portrayed in a very simplistic way. Yeah, sometimes even negative. Exactly. We need to seek out different perspectives yeah. and be open to the idea that what we think we know yeah. might not be the whole story. It also reminds us yeah. that the most powerful stories aren't always these grand historical narratives. Right. Sometimes it's the everyday encounters, yeah. the acts of kindness, the shared moments of laughter and understanding. Exactly. Those are the things that really connect us as human beings. 
So if a single YouTube video yeah. can offer such a nuanced view of China. It really makes you wonder. What other stories are out there? What other perspectives are waiting to be discovered? That's the exciting part. It is. The world is full of untold stories. It's just waiting for us to explore them. With an open mind. Absolutely.